most insane syringe ever. Let's go for symmetry here. Okay, yeah. now I just... Hold on. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> I can solve this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna break it. It's gonna break yeah, it. Don't, yeah, don't ruin it. it. Don't ruin it. It's like... What's my hand in that? <laughs> oh shit! Why would you do that? Wow! No shit! Who could have guessed that when you put your hand in a spinning What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I've just finished my first year of UBC Engineering. Of the 13 absolutely insane courses that I took in my first year, one of these courses was Physics 159. In this video, I'm going to walk you through everything I wish I knew before I took this course and some survival tips to help you get through it. And just as a disclaimer here, everything mentioned in this video is based on my experience from taking Physics 159 during the 2022 slash 2023 school year. And all the information in this video is subject to change in the future, so please don't get mad at me if your lab final is worth like half your grade now instead of 20% like I had it. And timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. So what is Physics 159 all about? In this course, which is a one credit laboratory course, you will learn all about the tools and strategies for creating your own ways to measure things. The rationale behind this course is that engineering involves a lot of observation and experimentation, so being able to measure things accurately and to develop ways to test measurement procedures is very important. Through the labs that you'll be doing each week, you'll get to explore different ways to measure different quantities and how to formulate empirical models. Now that we know what the course is about, let's get into how Physics 159 will be structured for any given week and the materials that you'll need for this course. Each week, you will have a three hour lab session for Physics 159. For each lab session, you will have a specific measurement objective for which you will design a procedure for. The main deliverable by the end of each lab session is a copy of your lab notes, which will be a record of what your objective was, the tools you had at your disposal, the formulas and quantities that you were related, what you tested and tried, the procedure you developed for the measurement, and your thoughts and reflections on what you did and what you could have done differently. Your lab notes by no means need to be extremely polished or neat. The TAs are mainly grading your lab notes based on your experimental process and how you came to your final calculations and methods. In these labs, you will be working with a partner, but you will be making your lab notes independently but that rarely ever happened in my class. You must submit your lab notes by the end of your lab session or else a late deduction will be applied. And either yours or your partner's lab notes will be graded at random each week. Oh, and a little side note here, you will not know what you will be doing in each lab session until the start of your class. Other than the lab sessions, the only other weekly component of Physics 159 are some pre-lab activities to help you prepare for the upcoming lab. These usually involve a short reading or a simple activity, and you will need to complete a Canvas quiz for these pre-lab activities. To be honest, these activities provided little to no preparation at all for the weekly labs, so don't expect them to provide any meaningful hints as to what you might do for that week. In terms of the required materials for this course, you're going to need a few things to help you get set up. The first thing that you'll need is a computer or a tablet that will allow you to make your lab notes, either handwritten or typed up. It must be able to output a PDF file of your lab notes to submit on Canvas for grading. The second thing that you'll need is to download some graphing software, as you'll be collecting data from your labs and making observations from graphs of your data. For basic data, plotting Excel is recommended because it handles error bars better than other spreadsheet softwares. But for more complex data analysis with linear fitting and uncertainties, you can use MATLAB to graph this data, and the Physics 159 instructional team will provide you with the code to do this. And the last thing that isn't explicitly a must have, but that will improve the quality of your lab submissions is your smartphone camera for taking pictures. In Physics 159, a picture is really worth a thousand words and they can really make your lab submissions much easier to understand. 
Additionally, having photos of the steps in your lab procedures will A, make it so much easier to come back to when you're repeating your procedures for the two week labs, and B, it will make it easier for the TAs to grade your labs and it may result in a higher mark. So case in point, pictures and graphs are your best friends in this course. All right, now let's get into what you're actually going to learn in Physics 159. And by learn, I mean the labs that you might get to do in this course. Disclaimer here again, the labs that I'm going to be talking about were the ones that I did in my first year, and they may be different in future years. So use these as samples of what you could be doing in Physics 159. The first three labs of Physics 159 are referred to as the base labs, which focus on learning the skills that you'll need to develop your own measurement procedures in future labs. In our first lab, our objective was to measure the spring constant of a spring by using tools that measure length and mass. Our method of doing this was by placing an object on top of the spring and measuring how much the spring compressed by. And using the Hooke's Law formula, we were able to calculate the spring constant. In our second lab, our objective was to measure the tension in a string by using tools that measure length and a spectrum analyzer on our phones. To do this, we plucked the string a few times and recorded the frequencies produced by the string to find the harmonics. With this and a little bit of algebra, we could then calculate the tension in the string. In the last base lab, our objective was to measure the ratio of a voltage divider, which is a series of circuit components that produces a voltage drop. We had access to a breadboard, some circuit components, a digital multimeter, an oscilloscope, and a function generator for this lab, and these tools did show up again later in the course. Moving on to the last three experiment labs, these are two-week labs where you'll create your measurement procedure in the first week and then carry out your procedure in the second week to get more and better data. In the first of these experiment labs, we were tasked with measuring the pressure distribution of sound waves in a tube and determining the speed of sound in that tube. We had access to a speaker, a microphone, a tube, a function generator, and an oscilloscope to measure the pressure distributions at different harmonics, and with this data we were able to calculate the speed of sound inside the tube. In the second experiment lab, we were tasked with measuring the capacitance of a capacitor by using an RC circuit, an oscilloscope, and a function generator. We outputted a square wave to charge up the capacitor, collected and imported the data into MATLAB, and used the slope of the graph to calculate the capacitance of the capacitor. And in the last experiment lab of Physics 159, we were tasked with measuring the pressure and molar density of the air in the room by using some length measurement tools, a scale, a syringe, some masses, a fulcrum, and a desk clamp. This was probably the most difficult lab out of all of the labs thus far, and it really showed when the pressure and molar density that we calculated was two times more than it, what it actually was. By hanging the masses off the syringe, measuring the volume difference, and applying it to a formula that somehow related everything, and with a little bit of hopes and dreams, we were somewhat able to calculate the air pressure and the molar density of the air. And those are the labs that I did in Physics 159. Again, these may not be the same labs that you will do in future years, but it should give you an idea of the types of labs to expect in this course. In terms of the grading scheme for Physics 159, here's the breakdown of everything that you'll be graded on and the weights associated with each item. Starting with the pre-lab exercises, these are weighted at 5% of your final grade. Your lab submissions for the first three base labs are weighted at 30%, and your lab submissions for the last three experiment labs are weighted at 45%. Lastly, your lab final is weighted at 20% of your final grade. Your lab final is your last chance to demonstrate the skills you've developed throughout the course, individually. Yes, that means you cannot rely on your partner for the lab final. For my lab final, there were two components to it, a written component and a practical component. For the written component, we were given example procedures to assess and we were asked specific questions about these procedures. For the practical component, we were then had to execute one of the procedures of our choice using the equipment available to us, making all the same observations that we would for a typical lab. 
Even though this may change in the future, I will let you know that my lab final involved a procedure that required an RC circuit, and we were allowed access to an oscilloscope, a function generator, a digital multimeter, a breadboard, and some circuit components. In your lab final, everything will be recorded on paper this time, and that includes your graphs, which will be sketches of your observations. To be honest, the average person will probably already be passing the course even before taking the lab final, and because it's only weighted at like 20% of your final grade, it'll probably be the least consequential final exam that you'll take in first year. Alright, now onto some survival tips and advice for surviving in Physics 159. To be completely honest, I don't really have much concrete advice for this course because there's not really much you can do outside of class to give you an edge. So I'll mostly be telling you about the things that I wish I knew before heading into this course. Starting with your lab notes, here are a few things that the TAs will really like and that will help you get a better mark for your lab submissions. Firstly, graphs, charts, and pictures are your lab notes best friend. They help to convey your observations and data much better than just words alone, and the TAs just really like them as well. So I would highly recommend using them when writing up your lab notes. Second, always make sure to include uncertainties and uncertainty calculations in your lab notes. This course is all about measurement, and there is always some sort of uncertainty with any measurement. So you must make sure that you make note of it and deal with them in your calculations. Third, I would highly recommend typing up your lab notes as opposed to writing them by hand. Because it is such a time crunch to complete your labs, which we'll get into in a second, it's just a lot faster to type up your lab notes. Yes, you will have to deal with weird math symbols, some equations, and annoying word document formatting, but it will ultimately save you time in the end. Also, a benefit of typing up your lab notes is that you can reuse your notes templates each week. And lastly, don't be afraid to admit in your lab notes things that you are unsure of or don't know, things that went wrong during your lab, or things that you weren't able to complete. The TAs are looking for authenticity in your lab notes, so as long as you're noting down what you're unsure of and making adjustments to combat it, they could still give you some marks. Moving on to some things to know about Physics 159 in general, this is a course where time and understanding are not on your side. For most of the labs, my friends and I found ourselves scrambling to finish up our lab notes right before the end of our lab session, as there was never enough time to complete most of our labs. I think I submitted one of my labs about one minute before the deadline. Part of the reason for this is that most of us had no idea what we were supposed to be doing for the first part of the lab. And after the TAs finally explained to us what we were supposed to be doing, we were already half an hour behind schedule. So just expect to be confused and in a time crunch a lot of the time in Physics 159. Oh, and I can't emphasize enough how important it is to get a good partner for your labs. You don't want to be stuck with someone that leaves you to do all of the work and then just copies your lab notes right before it's time to submit them. Also, just be a good partner as well. Sometimes you may find that you and your partner have different areas of strength. For example, some people are more comfortable with the circuitry and electronic stuff, while others are more suited to graphing and data analysis. If you and your partner have different strong suits, don't be afraid to divide and conquer your tasks but don't delegate so much that you have no idea how to use the oscilloscope or how to create an RC circuit before your lab final. And for those of you who are wondering, I scored an 82% in Physics 159 and the class average for my lab section was 75%. Definitely one of my better marks in first year, but it didn't really mean that much in the end because it was a one credit course and thus it is weighted less in our overall averages. And that's about it for everything that you need to know before going into Physics 159. I really, really hope this video can just help one person going into first year UBC engineering in the future because I'll feel like my suffering in first year wasn't for nothing. And as a thanks for sticking all the way to the end of the video, I'll let you know that my next and last video of this series will be about Physics 158. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.